Welcome to On the Other Hand. In this video, Brian Dunning on the podcast Skeptoid did an episode on the subject of sin. As with all response videos, it is encouraged to go watch the reference video so you can see the full context for yourselves. Links are in the description below. Brian ends the episode by talking about common sins as follows. Hate and anger are sins in many religions. I don't really hate anyone, and I don't get angry very often. About the only thing that gets me angry is when I hear the worst of the bad news from the world. Children being abused or murdered, and genocides. Apparently, the world's major religions think that I should go to hell because those things make me angry. That loses me right there. I respect the way some of the faithful, such as the Amish, can overlook these crimes and offer loving forgiveness to even the worst criminals. But I prefer to take the label of sinner and be outraged. Lying. This one's tough. I don't know how anyone can claim that they don't practice this sin every day, no matter how religious they are. Have you ever told anyone that you can't go somewhere, or can't do something, when the truth is you simply didn't want to? You're a liar. You ever stopped talking about someone when they entered the room to deceive them into thinking you weren't talking about them? You're a liar. Ever give someone one of those quick fake smiles when you pass them in the hall, as if seeing them makes you happy? You're a liar. Lies don't have to be spoken, and they are usually not malicious, but they're still lies. We all do it, all day, every day. Lying is a fundamental of politeness and a pillar of good behavior. The truth is, the concept of sin has no place in the lives of intelligent adults in modern society. Politeness, honesty, industry, and simply being yourself will take you a lot further. I say to those who wish to impose their particular culture's religious restrictions onto those who don't choose to follow them, keep your arbitrary restrictions and your hateful labels and your hateful belief that others should go to hell to yourselves. A couple points. First, Brian talks about anger as if any anger is always considered a sin. I would dare say that most religions have something similar to how Christianity has Christ cleansing the temple with a whip. Anger can be sinful, but I would say most religions have some form of righteous anger or indignation. Second, lying. Brian puts forward many examples of what he considers lying, including faking a smile while passing someone in the hall. To me, this sounds far more like a cynic talking than a skeptic. Brian says lying is a pillar of good behavior, but he seems to be casting too wide of a net on what is lying. But that's just my personal opinion. Finally, Brian concludes that people who believe in sin are unintelligent and hateful. On the one hand, I know of religious people who are unintelligent and hateful. But on the other hand, believing in the concept of sin does not inherently make you such. Here's my bias. I quite enjoy many of Skeptoid's podcasts, and there are a great many subjects that Brian sheds valuable light on. That being said, I think Brian has a blind spot when it comes to talking about religion. I also am religious and believe in the concept of sin, so there's that. I do think Brian's opinions might have matured since that early podcast because many podcasts later he has this to say. Skeptics and believers tend to follow the same thought processes and come to conclusions that validate their own methods and beliefs and invalidate those of their opponent. More than once, I've had a conversation with a well-read, intelligent, articulate, true believer who charged me with the same flaws in my logic that I found glaring in his. I've watched debates between the top names in science and pseudoscience and seen these conversations deteriorate into little more than takes one to know one, nah-uh, and I know you are, but what am I? To be an effective skeptic, it's critical to understand that your opponent is not simply a lunatic. Maybe some are, but the majority are as intelligent and thoughtful as you. Dismissing your opponent as crazy is a weakness in you. When a skeptic talks with a believer, he often finds the believer to be closed-minded, in that the believer is not open to any evidence that challenges his belief. The fact is that the believer also finds the skeptic to be closed-minded, in that he does not accept the evidence that supports the belief. From the perspective of each, each is right. And that's really important to understand. I might have concluded my video here, but I'm not thoroughly convinced that Brian's blind spot of religion isn't still there. Because in a different podcast, he said, 
People who believe in Bible stories are on thin enough ice as it is, but at least a lot of them have enough sense to say that the stories are allegorical and not meant to be taken literally. I feel like this is the blind spot of Brian. He feels as if religion or biblical miracles could be proven false. Religions are inherently not scientifically based, and trying to judge religions through a skeptic's evidence-based lens is flawed. Science deals with what can be observed and measured, and religion is about what is beyond our senses and understanding. As I sometimes do, I now turn to someone more eloquent and respected than myself for a response I feel applies here. C.S. Lewis was an atheist who converted to Christianity, and a channel called C.S. Lewis Doodles presents his words well in video format. The following is an excerpt from a video on religion and science, and this clip jumps into a conversation about how Joseph, the husband of Mary, believed in the virgin birth as a miracle. He believed in the virgin birth as something supernatural. He knew nature works in fixed, regular ways. But he also believed that there existed something beyond nature, which could interfere with her workings, from outside, so to speak. But modern science has shown there's no such thing. Really? said I. Which of the sciences? Oh, well, that's a matter of detail, said my friend. I can't give you chapter and verse from memory. But don't you see, said I, that science never could show anything of the sort? Why on earth not? Because science studies nature. And the question is whether anything besides nature exists, anything outside. How could you find that out by studying simply nature? But don't we find out that nature must work in an absolutely fixed way? I mean, the laws of nature tell us not merely how things do happen, but how they must happen. No power could possibly alter them. How do you mean? said I. Look here, said he. Could this something outside that you talk about make two and two five? Well, no, said I. All right, said he. Well, I think the laws of nature are really like two and two making four. The idea of their being altered is as absurd as the idea of altering the laws of arithmetic. Half a moment, said I. Suppose you put sixpence into a drawer today, and sixpence into the same drawer tomorrow. Do the laws of arithmetic make it certain you'll find a shilling's worth there the day after? Of course, said he, provided no one's been tampering with your drawer. Ah, but that's the whole point, said I. The laws of arithmetic can tell you what you'll find with absolute certainty, provided that there's no interference. If a thief has been at the drawer, of course you'll get a different result. But the thief won't have broken the laws of arithmetic, only the laws of England. Now, aren't the laws of nature much in the same boat? Don't they all tell you what will happen, provided there's no interference? How do you mean? Oh, well, the laws will tell you how a billiard ball will travel on a smooth surface if you hit it in a particular way. But only provided no one interferes. If, after it's already in motion, someone snatches up a cue and gives it a biff on one side, why then, you won't get what the scientist predicted. Well, no, of course not. He can't allow for monkey tricks like that. Quite. And in the same way, if there was anything outside nature, and if it interfered, then the events which the scientist expected wouldn't follow. That would be what we call a miracle. In one sense, it wouldn't break the laws of nature— the laws tell you what will happen if nothing interferes. They can't tell you whether something is going to interfere. Looking at things skeptically and empirically is vitally important for so many aspects of life. But using only empiricism is the wrong sort of tool for measuring religion. For if there truly is a God, it doesn't surprise me in the least that God's ways are higher than man's. In this case, God would be perfectly scientific and logically consistent, but man's understanding simply hasn't arrived at that highest plane yet. As always, thanks. Hope you enjoyed.